How are we doing there boys and girls? Matthew's here and welcome back to another video. So it's finally official. We have ourselves our release date for Shadowlands patch 9.1. It is coming on the 30th of June. That is of course if you play over on the EU. You get it a day before if you play on the NA on June 29th. Congratulations to you. Good old NA is going to be able to play test it for us before it comes to the EU. Um, it's a long term meme for those that care. Uh, but what I wanted to do in this video today is I'm sure you've probably seen 20 different content creators out there telling you that the patch is coming now. It's almost impossible to not have known that. But what we should really look to do from a goal making perspective, which is where, where I like to bring my content from, is now talk about, well, what are we going to be doing in the next, what is it, 10, 12 days, whatever it is, until we get access to patch 9.1. So today on stream, we put together a little bit of a, uh, I guess you could call it a, a prep preparation list a bit of a priority list of things that you could be getting on with in the next week to make sure that you can step foot into patch 9.1 fully prepared ready to rock and roll and more importantly ready to make a whole stack load of cash so we split it into three different tiers right we brainstormed a whole load of ideas and we sort of decided that there are some stuff that is an absolute must do uh, and then there are a bunch of other little fluffy things that if you happen to have that spare time or the desire to do so are still going to be worthwhile for you now what we're going to do is we're going to go down through each one in turn i mean you could just pause the video and read it do do whatever you wish uh if you do choose to do that then please remember to hit the like button and subscribe uh, but we're going to go through exactly what each one of these means and explain it in just 30 seconds of detail uh, as i appreciate not everybody is kept up with the ptr news um but the first the highest priority thing to do is break the news to your loved ones that you are going to be spending the month of July in Shadowlands. More importantly, probably in Corthia. Um, say goodbye to summer 2021 as it's going to be spent in World of Warcraft. But jokes aside, the main thing that you probably want to do, uh, even from a goal making perspective, this sounds silly, right? But on your main character, you want to step foot into Shadowlands patch 9.1 with 40 renown. Um, simply because you want to be on curve with renown to give yourself access to flying ASAP. Now we already know that flying is not going to be able to be unlocked until week 2 because it itself is locked behind Renown. I believe you have to be Renown 44 to get the campaign quest upon its completion. You get basically flying unlocked for your account. No spoilers here, I'm not going to tell you what it consists of but that's all you need to know. So you want to step foot into patch 9.1 on your main character, at least Renown 40, so that you can keep chipping away and be on curve as far as Renown is concerned. Um, I didn't think that I would at this point in the expansion have to go over that one, but it turns out a lot of people, especially as goblins out there, don't actually play the main game a huge amount. And even getting your main character to 40 is a bit of a chore for some people. And that even those that haven't accidentally done it just through some, you know, basic basic gameplay. But outside of that, what are some high priority things to chip away from? Well, let's break it down in a, a little bit of detail. Oh, we're selling things. Uh, any character that crafts gear. So if you've been able to take advantage of the Crafter's Mark gear in patch 9.0, if you did your Venari stuff, if you unlocked Crafter's Mark 2, you were making 168 gear, you probably know that that was a very, very lucrative market to be in. Uh, everybody... When they freshly hit 60, they want themselves some simple, quick, easy, fast to acquire gear. Um, this pattern is being repeated again in patch 9.1. We are going to be getting Crafters Mark 3 and Crafters Mark 4. Um, well, Crafters Mark 4 has a funny name. Uh, Crafters Mark of the Chained Isle, to give it its full name. But for the most part, consider it Crafters Mark 3 and 4. Um, to get access to those, you're going to need to be spending time in Corthia, which of course means you're going to need to be level 60 on those characters. Up until this point, a lot of crafting can be done on lower level characters, but if you want to, you know, stay up, uh, up uh, with what's sort of fresh and what's going to be the new markets, get your alts, get your crafting characters up to at least level 60. There is an extra requirement if they happen to be base legendary crafting characters. 
Anybody that's got on board with legendaries this patch or this expansion so far knows that they're a bit of a cash cow. If you can unlock some of the higher rank legendaries and get crafting them, there are people on your servers that are willing to spend lots and lots of gold on their legendaries and it's been very, very profitable. What we are aware is that if you want to uh, be crafting the new legendaries, which will be ranks 5 and rank 6, uh, you are going to also need to step foot into patch 9.1 with 40 renown. This is because the pattern to get uh, the Vestige of Origins, the, uh, okay, maybe I should give you a 30 second TLDR just on how legendaries are working. I've got videos on this on the, on the channel, so make sure you check those out if you want an in-depth uh, guide on what's going on with legendaries. But TLDR, you need to create an optional reagent to make the rank fives and rank six. You use that optional reagent on your existing ranks. So you basically craft a rank three, with a vestige of origins which will then add two ranks to it so out pops a rank five the pattern to learn how to make this vestige of origins is called the tome of origins and it is locked behind renowned 44 and is campaign quest gated so if you want to be doing your uh if you want to be getting on board with legendaries and more importantly you want to be getting on board with the new ranks the ranks five and rank six which is where the money's going to be the gold is going to be in the new stuff uh you want to make sure that your your tailors your leather workers your jewel crafters your blacksmiths have got all of the renown so that they can stay on curve with that and get access to the new legendary stuff asap Finally, the last thing that is of super high priority and a big recommendation from me personally is get your TSM groups and operations in, in check. Uh, just recently, TSM 4.11 went into beta. Uh, 4.11 for Trade School Master brings about with it the support for optional reagents and legendary crafting, which is a massive step forward for Trade School Master users and a massive step forward for goblins in general. Now, it is in beta. And it's a little bit pay to win. You can get access to the TSM 4.11 beta to start getting it set up now if you happen to be a TSM subscriber uh, or a TSM premium member, I think they call it. Uh, if you're not, you can still sign up for access to the beta, but it's on a, like a first come first served sort of thing. So the sooner you sign up, the sooner you might get it. Everything seems to indicate that this may be the only way to get access to TSM 4.11. And if you watch the last video on the channel, you'll see why TSM 4.11 is so important uh, going forward. Um, so yeah, it's a relatively high priority. Get your groups in order, get your operations set up initially, because that's really the last thing you're going to want to be doing when the patch is fresh and there's loads of new content to go out and play there. So that's the main stuff, right? That's that's kind of my, my high, high priority stuff to do from a goblin perspective. There are a few things. We'll zoom through these a little bit faster because they're less important, um, but they are still relevant to a lot of people out there. If you are a big crafter, if you like making a load of stuff, maybe get some of those you know those intermediate materials crafted already set your blacksmith going making a whole bunch of shadow gas ingots now uh, make a whole bunch of the enchanted materials so that you're not wasting too much time crafting them when the patch goes live um, because you know they take time to make uh, and it's unless you happen to have multiple accounts it's going to be beneficial to get these things made in advance uh, stocking up on stygia it's not essential to stock up on Stygia. I sort of claimed to stock up on the easy Stygia. I wouldn't go grinding for Stygia right now, but just, you know, do Venari's weekly quests. They give you like four or 500 Stygia in a go. Um, if you happen to have a bunch of Stygia already, great. There's not many needs for Stygia. Uh, not only to mention the fact that you get thrown Stygia in patch 9.1 anyway. Uh, just doing, just killing mobs out in the moor and in Corthia, you'll pick up a bunch of Stygia anyway. But there is a thing called a Corthian Armament, which is basically catch-up gear. It costs a thousand Stygia, and it's basically an item level 200 piece of loot. So if you get some easy Stygia, at least 2,000 is a good ballpark, I would recommend. But don't go over the top farming Stygia, because it's not super important. Uh, leveling any professions, getting the last, last few skill slots done for your professions is just one of those things that takes a bit of time, takes a little bit of effort, and it's the last thing really you want to be doing mid-hype mid, mid 
hype. Um, so get those professions in order. I would focus on things that are considered consumables. So your alchemy, cooking and enchanting and maybe even fishing. Those are going to be good professions to make sure you've got up and running. Uh, as, you know, as and when it's raiding season, it's also alchemy season and it's also cooking season. They're, they're professions where you can sell large amounts of stuff relatively quickly, especially if you happen to play on a server that's got a lot of raiders. Um, yeah. Good thing to have those up and ready. Now this one is going to trigger some people, um, but it's highly advised to have a fair amount of liquid gold available to you going into a new patch. We can never predict everything that's going to happen. There's always something that will jump out of the woodwork that you'll want to spend some gold on. And if you've spent all of your gold leveling up your legendaries or investing in materials or doing X, Y, and Z, and you don't have any liquid gold available, you'll kick yourself when something new and exciting happens. Um, I would recommend holding back on spending or going below the million gold. Now, I know some people will hear this will be like, are you kidding me? I've got like 40,000 gold. Um, I know, I get it. Uh, the first million gold is easily the hardest gold for you to ever make in this game without a question. I, I'm not taking away from the effort needed to do it. But if you have done it and you do have the liquid gold available, don't spend it right now. Um, materials are doing crazy things. Looking to spend your last remaining gold on flips and investments is really, really risky at this point. Make sure it's saved away. Make sure you have access to it. It means if something, you know, maybe you see that cheap cheap new raid boe pop up on your auction house or something and if you don't have a bit of gold saved you're not going to be able to take advantage of that um and then the real low low stuff uh the stuff that doesn't really matter but if you're already kind of pretty prepared with your goal making adventure uh it's not going to be i mean it's either neither here nor there but stuff to get up and running with you guys who follow the channel on a regular basis will know I'm a big fan of the mission table. Uh, it's proving to be a bit of a cash cow if you're willing to get it set up initially. Bare minimum, just get your 17 followers. Uh, if you do the campaign and you run a few uh, trips through Torghast, you'll probably end up with most of your followers for the mission table. And it just means that you can, you know, it's a Facebook game at the end of the day. Uh, you log on once or twice a day, send those dudes out on their missions and, you know, they bring back some free goodies. It's not, not, not too uh, much to it than that, really. Um, catching up on reputation. This is equally not super high priority, but it's cool to have done. Uh, I'm looking at you, alchemists, uh, with your shade stones. With it being raiding season, uh, that, as we've said already, becomes alchemy season at the same time, and the shade stone will uh, be a relatively profitable daily cooldown for the alchemists as well. But it is rep gated. Uh, was it the avowed? I think you need to be honored with them to get it. It's not going to take you a huge amount of time, but if you haven't done it yet, it's worthwhile spending the last few days before the patch getting that done. This also goes as far as to say the arboreal shard reputations. Uh, this really only applies to the alliance of us out there. Because, of course, if you play Horde, just roll a Goblin. Goblins get maximum uh, discount on the Boil Shards, regardless of their standing with the factions. Um, but you don't want to be spending 125 gold on your Boil Shards if you're crafting legendaries. You don't even want to be spending 113 or 106. You want to be getting those Boil Shards at 100 gold apiece, which is going to require you to be exalted in either, in either Bastion or Ardenweld. If you haven't done that so far, worthwhile doing. We're going to talk about stockpiling uh, in a great amount of detail in a separate video, so I'm not going to touch on it much here. Um, but if you do uh, look to stockpile any materials, don't go bonkers. Stockpiling materials is always a little bit risky, because, or especially with flying coming, uh, as flying will have an effect on the supply and demand of the market for sure. Um, but stockpiling a few materials so that you're not always reliant on buying your materials straight off the auction house when you need them is kind of sensible but don't overstock on them and like i said only start stockpiling materials using quote unquote spare gold i would still highly recommend you have a good amount of liquid gold available to you uh, before you start looking at stockpiling 
One thing that came up was cashing out any spare valor on materials. Goblins tend to do callings because callings tend to make gold. What also comes with callings is valor points. Now most goblins probably haven't spent these valor points on anything and might actually have a fair few of them. There's a vendor that sits next to the great vault where you can trade, I think it's 750 valor points for um, either 10 heavy callus hide or 20 alethium or my money would be to spend it on heavy callus hide if you if you've got it but like i said that's only if you care absolutely zero <laughs> for gear in the first place you might not even have enough valor to buy a bag it's not really a biggie at the end of the day and finally something that shouldn't really need to be said but so many people fail to do this just clean your bags and your bank out a little bit you're going to have lots of random bits of trash and gear and old materials and stuff send it all to a bank character um, let them store it in a, in a reagent bank somewhere get your bags nice and clean and tidy so you're ready to hit the ground running once patch 9.1 lands but there we go boys and girls that's basically my uh my preparation guide for patch 9.1 a goblin perspective if there's any other things that you think i've missed please let me know in the comments down below and i'll make sure to to, to pin them uh so people can see them as well but at least by my opinion uh, i think this is a pretty conclusive sort of setup guide for getting into patch 9.1 and you know, now that we've got a date, it's not far away. It's not far away. I'm looking forward to it. But there we go. Um, if you enjoy the video, boys and girls, remember to give the video a like. It really does help the channel grow. Uh, it pushes that video out to more people if, you, if you've enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you're new around here. We recently hit 10k subs, which is a massive milestone for me as a creator. So thank you to all of you guys that have hit the sub button. Um, but that's about me done for today, boys and girls. Utilize this, go out, get your prep done, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.